Welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek and I like to talk about tech, travel, and all the gear that goes along with that. And in that vein today, I'm gonna to be talking about something that's going to help with both my camera gear and to lighten my backpack. And that is this, the Peak Design Travel Tripod. So before we start, I just wanna say that this video is not sponsored by Peak Design in any way. Um, I bought this tripod with my own money, um, but I will be leaving a link down below so you can find it. But what does help me out is if you click the like and subscribe button below for more tech and travel content. As you can see, I've already taken it out of the box and it does come in this nice little pouch that they've put a lot of craftsmanship into. It's got a little handle on the back here and then some loops that you actually get to put the, uh, the little strap connectors that come on a lot of Peak Design um, straps. These little strap connectors right here so you can attach a strap to it if you don't wanna carry it around in your backpack all day. This pouch also gives it a little bit of protection. Um, it's not very thick and not very heavy, so I would probably still keep this when I travel, even though it does add a tiny bit of extra weight, but it makes it really discreet, which is another huge feature of this tripod that I really like because some of the other tripods I have over here don't have all the features or they have a lot of good features, but they're too large. Even something like this ProMaster tripod, even though it is carbon fiber, super light, and a lot smaller than a lot of other tripods, it's still very conspicuous because it looks like a traditional tripod. It has the three huge round legs and the one center column, and you have to invert the legs and shift the column all the way to the top to get it into its sort of travel mode to be the smallest it can be here. And then you have to adjust a bunch of things to get it to fit in a little tighter. But even that right there, um, it still sticks out. And I've even had a problem with this style of tripod being taken out of my checked luggage when I was flying from Bali, Indonesia to Morocco. Uh, I got my bag back three days later. Um, that's a whole nother story, but even after I got my bag back, they had taken my other tripod, so I was out a few hundred dollars there. So the more inconspicuous a tripod can be and still have all those features, the better. All right, now I'm gonna quick take this out of its little pouch. It's got this nice little zipper along the side here and the top, and then you just pull out the tripod. And the tripod is very light. When I weighed it, it weighed just under three pounds, where this travel tripod weighed just over three pounds, and you can see the size difference. If you set them down next to each other, even packed up, this one is gonna be a little bit shorter and it's gonna be a lot less bulky. So you can put it in the space of a water bottle if you wanted to. I did opt for the carbon fiber model just because it gives that much more uh, stability and a little bit less weight. There's a lot to love about this tripod. And first I'll just start by spreading out the legs here. And if you set that down, you can see, just a moment once I get this one back out, how much shorter that actually packs down. And you've got the full articulating ball head right here where the ball head is sitting up here so you can actually set it a little bit lower if you wanted to. Um, that's gonna be beneficial for just quick carry. I can take out my camera and all I have to do is snap it in to the holster. It's there, it's done. Um, it's even locked on this side so there is a little sort of release here. Quick shoe and then pop it in there. And if you wanted to bring it up, you take out this little thing on the side there, untighten it, lift up, tighten it back to wherever you want it. And then the ball head is this rotating uh, sort of column cuff here. And you can articulate it wherever you'd like to. There is some issue with going at 90 degrees. You do have to have it on a certain way to make it go 90 degrees the way you want it and then you can tighten it back up and it is extremely sturdy. And if you turn the tripod around here, you can see this little locking mechanism that slides under this clip here and that's to lock the camera into place. And it also comes with a um, tripod adapter for, or a tripod mounting plate, I should say, for your camera, which works with all of Peak Design's capture clip system. And I really enjoy the capture clip system because I can, you know, unlock everything and I can snap it right back onto the bag strap or wherever I have that capture clip system located. And on the top of this tripod, you can even see that it has a little um, spirit level, which makes it a little bit easier to level everything off. But this really nice 
mechanism here that creates the um, sort of friction in the ball head is really easy to lock to, so it's a completely smooth transition from locked to unlocked. And Peak Design really put a lot of thought into this design because everything fits together really well, and that's just very evident here by the ball head. You just slide that into the legs there. Um, it even comes down just a little bit. You can lock that and then you can tighten everything. And so that this little uh, tightener doesn't stick out, they even made it retractable, so it goes in and out. Now on one of the legs, it does come with a little tool here that has some Allen key heads that are specific for this tripod. So when you pull out the head here, you can actually turn it to the side. Let me find the little pin there. And I believe it's... Yep, and now that it's that way, I can actually take this little thing here and loosen the hex key inside. And what that does is that gives me the ability to take off the ball head. And there's other attachments and stuff so you can attach other heads to this same mount or once you pull out the center column here, it actually can go flat for a super low angle. And there you go, super low angle. You can also turn this around if I wanted to go from the underside here and then have it be, you know, lifted just slightly off the ground with the camera. And all you have to do is flip it over and put your camera in whatever way you'd like to. And now you can shoot really close to the ground with any camera. So not only did they put a lot of thought into the legs and the ball head, they actually put a lot of thought into this, the center column right here. And this holds uh, with magnets. It's got this little mechanism here. If you pull it out, it's magnetically holding in a cell phone mount. And you can actually pop that right on top as well. So you don't have to carry an extra uh, phone mount or anything like that with you when you go places. And the phone mount works well. You just slip your phone right in there and it'll hold it in. And, you can do time lapses and a bunch of other different things if you'd like to use your phone as your primary shooting device. And when you're putting back the phone mount into the center column, you just kind of slide it back in. The magnets hold it in place and then you're able to take what uh, this little item is here, the hook end, and push it back up, pull out the, the locking mechanism and re-hook the hook there. And then this hook actually holds uh, weight. So if you're extending the tripod legs really far and it's a windy day and you need some weight so that the camera doesn't move, then you just hook a bag onto the bottom there. And just to show you how to get that center column back on, you connect the two pieces and then right in here, if you've got it positioned correctly, you can see that there is an Allen key space and you just tighten. You just take the Allen key that came with it, tighten it back up. Connected. I did forget to put it back in the tripod before I connected it, so I think I gotta do this. There we go. Also, the little Allen keys are positioned on one of the tripod legs, but this is a removable clip. Um, it's just a little holder for the tool. Uh, you can put that on any of the legs and you just kinda get it into a nice spot where it fits really tightly. Um, they've thought this through well, though, because also on the inside here, uh, where you've got the center column, if you turn it to the right way, you'll see that there is a tiny little hole there in the end of the hook, and then there's another hole as you go up the tripod. And those, again, are for those strap mounting clips right here that Peak Design offers, and one goes here, one goes up here, and then you don't even have to take the case to carry it. You can just have it strapped on um, with any Peak Design strap. Some of you are probably asking why I don't use an even smaller and lighter tripod like a small rig or a gorilla pod. And the answer is I do actually, or I have in the past. Um, I've got this Joby gorilla pod right here that I've used a ton and I really like it. It's just uh, light, it's easy to use and I can bend the legs to fit on anything. But the problem comes if I need a larger tripod. This only is the height it is. It cannot extend any higher than this and that's only about the height of the Peak Design tripod right out of the package. The next one I have been using has been this small rig, and I really like this for stuff like uh, the GoPro over here. Because I can mount the GoPro, it's really lightweight and inconspicuous, so if I'm in a place where they don't want people to film so much, then a GoPro and a small rig is perfect. Or if I'm just looking for some really low to the ground shots without you know, having a full tripod, but this one kind of does all of that now. It's 
It's really small, light, compact. Um, I have actually clipped this camera in and used it as sort of vlogging setup. If I do this, just loosen everything up here, turn it. I mean, I can use it as sort of a, a vlogging rig like this. Um, I don't talk to the camera all that much when I'm making videos anymore, so this is more of a, you know, a few seconds thing instead of a few minutes, so it doesn't tire out my arm that much. So obviously being an extendable tripod, it does extend the legs and you can use these little clips here to pull it out. It's super quick and easy. I'll show you here in a second how quick and easy it can be. And these are really tight and secure, so I don't feel them going anywhere. Um, but one other cool thing is, if you want this to be an ultralight tripod, this little cuff right here above all of those clips open and you can actually pull out, let's see if I can do it. Yep, you can pull out the entire leg section there and it leaves this sort of open uh, column here. And if you were to take all of those off, there's actually an offering by Peak Design where there's just a foot that you put back in here and then that makes it an ultralight travel tripod. So if I took this down um, and took all of these off, I mean, it takes a substantial amount of the tripod's weight with it. And then you'd need those extensions to keep the feet at normal level. But it is significantly lighter. If you wanted to go ultra light, you could even take the center column out and just use it as a tiny tripod. The legs of the tripod are also completely connected. So unlike other travel tripods where you might be able to take out the center column and one of the legs and make it into a monopod or a selfie stick, uh, it doesn't have the ability to do that right now. Um, I don't know if maybe they'll upgrade that in the future with some uh, ingenious design, but as it stands right now, it is a tripod, not a monopod. And then the feet that come on it are the rubberized grippy feet. So it's good for a lot of places, but if you're gonna be in like mud or dirt and a lot of stuff like that where there's not a lot of grip with the rubber, you can actually get an accessory where you can take these rubber pads off and get little uh, metal claws too. Again, at Peak Design's website, they have a lot of accessories for this. Like I mentioned before, you can get one. If you really like the ball head or the fluid head of your tripod, you can get a mounting plate that is just a mounting plate for this system so you don't have to get a different tripod. And also it can't be understated that the uh, rotating mechanism of the older tripods here that I have, uh, I don't really like those. These are definitely superior with these sort of just quick release locks. I mean, that's the entire leg right there in a matter of seconds, where for this I'd have to, you know, I can do it quick, but then you have to go back each one and twist up it just takes a little bit longer. It's not a huge hassle, but it just takes longer. All right, so I've come out here in my backyard to see how these two tripods stack up in terms of height and stability. First, I'm gonna take this, the ProMaster here, and this is the more traditional tripod, as you can see, and see how long it takes me to get out all the feet out here. All right, and as you can see, this is a little about eye level with me right here. Um, I'm gonna put up the travel tripod now. All right, there you go. I haven't quite mastered how to get the travel tripod out as quickly as possible, but it does take a lot less time, in my opinion, to set up because the center column is already facing up and ready to go, so I don't have to flip it over like I would with this one. And you can see it's almost the exact same size. Uh, there's just a little bit of lean here in the hill, so I'll just take that down there. Um, but it's maybe three inches or four inches shorter on the uh, top end here, which does not matter to me because I usually have, like you see the camera right now, it's pretty much talking head or I'm doing vlogging, which wouldn't uh, need the tripod at all. Um, and then I've got my camera over here and I can actually show you what the stability looks like. So if I put on this guy right here, let's turn the ball head. And again, I'm using the uh, tripod mount for the Peak Design camera system right there. 
All right, I'll just turn it on and give it a shake real quick right here at the base and see. And I mean, you can already see this thing is going back and forth quite a bit up here and you'll be able to see it on the video as well. Now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna switch it over to the travel tripod here. And I'll point it at roughly the same area, and then I'll give it a little tug. I mean, yeah, it still has a lot of shake, but you could also, on each of these, you could attach a bag right there for a little less shake. And with this lens being a 70 to 200 lens, it's gonna be quite long, so it's actually gonna shake a little bit more, but it does have the vibration compensation on both of those. Um, but it does work very well, and for being more compact, I do like that design feature. So that has been my quick rundown and overview of the Peak Design Travel Tripod up against a more traditional uh, carbon fiber tripod. And for the money, if you do have the money, it is quite expensive, but for the money, I would say that the Travel Tripod is going to stay uh, for a long time with me. As long as no airport security see it as some sort of excess baggage or a threat. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and think I deserve your subscription, please click the subscribe button below along with the bell icon to be notified of all my new videos. This video has not been sponsored, but I'll leave a link in the description below to my website and my Teespring page. So if you'd like to go over there and check out some of the designs that I put on t-shirts and sweatshirts, uh, feel free to go check those out and help support the channel. Thanks again for watching this video and never stop adventuring.